seemed to be made that year and, and left all of the old dirty quarters down at the bottom of the job. Uh, well, that made me kind of upset because at a, at a young age, I'm only playing on the 85 pound and, and, you know, I do understand what a quarter is, but I wanted some shiny quarters in my pocket. I wanted some shiny quarters in my hand. Why she take all of the shiny ones and leave me all of the rugged ones? Uh, but when I got on the bus and I dropped my quarters in after she had placed her shiny ones in, it hit me right then and there that it did not make a difference if I had a shiny quarter or a rusty quarter. My quarter was still 25 cents like the quarter she had. And the bus driver nodded his head as I wore my little Buffalo Vest jersey so proud and he wished me luck. And I went and picked my seat of choice and I sat down thinking, ah, ah, trees. Uh, your quarter had no more value than mine. Here in this passage, we get right to it. Uh, we, we, in this passage, we look at the parable and see what Jesus is saying to the tax collectors and sinners. And hopefully you can see yourself in this passage like I can see myself. Uh, when we find ourselves in the 15th chapter of Luke, and Jesus is hanging with the tax collectors and sinners, in the area, and the Bible says that they drew close to him to hear him speak. I wish I could take that and go another way on the sermon because some of us need to understand when Christians talk, others listen. Uh, we can really preach on that, but we need, need to move on today. But the Pharisees and the scribes uh, complain that this man, uh, this guy that they call the Mashiach, uh, receives sinners, and not only that he eats with them. Oh, we got a problem on our hand because here we got this man named Jesus, the Mashiach, the Messiah, that they really don't know much of. And, 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 and he has the nerve to come in talking about this new way. And then not only is he talking about this new way, he has the nerve to sit with sinners and then break bread with them. Uh, I wish I had some folks that are walk with me this morning. Let me say it this way. Jesus is walking, talking, and eating with sinners. And the church folks have an attitude that he's cool with them and rather be with them than them. Uh, I gotta walk with me just for about 10 more minutes. I'm telling you, we're gonna be short this morning. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad about the fact that Jesus didn't mind eating and hanging out with sinners because that means he ate and hung out with me. And he still prefers to hang out with the lost as well as the found. I'm so glad this morning that Jesus still likes he still likes to have a happy meal with the unchurched folks than to have a main course meal with some hating church folks with their nose turned up, acting like they ain't never been there. They don't know what it's like. I wish I had some witnesses. It's right about here in the text that Jesus must have heard the complaining. So he addressed it by sharing these par parables. Uh, uh, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Uh, you know the passage is familiar. The, the, the 15th chapter of Luke. But here, uh, for preaching purposes, uh, we want to deal with the first parable. Jesus, he, he, he talks about any man who has a has a hundred sheep and he loses one, will leave the 99 to go search for the one sheep uh, that's in the wilderness. He, he will set out to go find the one sheep. And the Bible says that he will search for it until he finds it and place it on his shoulders and rejoice over it. He calls his friends to help celebrate the return of the sheep. And Jesus says, it's greater in heaven when one sinner repents than 99 who doesn't need repentance. Uh, uh, he's saying it's good for one lost soul to say, God, I'm sorry. Uh, clean me, fix me, use me. The 99 folks up in the house that swear they got it going on. And Jesus ain't been to the house in so long because they got it all together. They don't need Jesus. You know what I'm talking uh, and although a man will still have 99 sheep, uh, there's still value in that one lost sheep. Uh, uh, somebody bump somebody and say, uh, you're, you're valuable. Then Jesus makes it more personal for the Pharisees and scribes, sinners and tax collectors. This time he uses a woman and her role in her community and in the life of this lady or women. He explains this particular parable. Jesus said, Oh, what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Uh-huh. She has ten. But if she loses one, she'll light a lamp, sweep the 
your house and search carefully until she finds it. Jesus uses the point to show how important the sinner is to God. Brothers and sisters, let's put the parable in perspective for our lives this morning and imagine that we are the coin and Jesus is the woman. I know many of us are saved, delivered, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost this morning, but we all can remember when we were lost in sin. We all can remember when we were messed up from the neck. We all can remember when we were just like the prodigal son. We were living in a big slot and we were falling deeply in sin. Everybody can remember. I don't care what your title is, how long you've been saved, how long you've been serving. It's just a quick thought to go back to when you were in your yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh. To better understand this parable, we must understand the worth of the coin to the woman of the biblical day. And no matter how much money a woman had or did not have, she made sure she owned at least 10 coins. Uh-huh. She made sure that she owned at least 10 coins. Uh, when a woman got married, when a woman got married, she, she took the money she had accumulated throughout her life and sold it into a headdress which she wore on her wedding day. She had a, a wreath around the head and, and her coins would be sold into it. Mm. She used 10 silver coins, which is why our Lord picked this particular number to illustrate this story. So you and I can understand that these 10 coins were of tremendous significance to her as a woman. They symbolized her power and they, they represented not just the value of the money, but all that she had to contribute to her marriage. This headdress, this, this head garment that was of such value to the woman of that time of the biblical day that even by law it was impossible from it, for it to be taken for her. Even if she owed a debt, they could not take her ten silver because it was for her and no one for but her. And so after researching the value of these particular coins or the coin that would go into the headdress, I found out that each coin was worth 60 cents, making her headdress six dollars. And that was a whole lot of money back then. So Jesus was saying, if she lost one of the coins, if she lost the possibility of getting married, wouldn't she take the time to search for the missing coin until she found it? Well, brothers and sisters, there are some things I want to point out in this particular parable, and I pray it bless your spirit like a blessed mind. I pray you get something for it. Number one, unlike the first parable, the things that are lost, watch this. I said this the same group in another sermon before, but the things that are lost are in two completely different places. It's one thing to be lost in the wilderness. It's one thing to be lost in the world. It's one thing to be lost in darkness. But it's a whole other thing to be lost and be in the house. <laughs> Good God Almighty. It's one thing to be lost in the wilderness, but it's a whole other program when you're lost in the house. So keep that in mind as, as, as we are the coins and Jesus is the woman. Can I get a witness out there via Facebook Live that can, that can be in the house? You can be in the house and still be lost. Although the coin is in the house, it's still lost. Although it's not subjected to the elements outdoor, it's not subjected to the rain, the wind, the snow, the dirt, it's still lost. And although it will get covered with mud, it's still going to get dirty. I wish I had some help up in here. Although it's somewhere in a familiar place, its whereabouts are still unknown. Brothers and sisters, you can be in church and still be lost. You can still preach and still be lost. You can be an assistant to the pastor and still be lost. You can be an usher, a missionary, and still be lost. You can serve in the house of the Lord and still be lost. Uh, I'm here to tell somebody you can be in a familiar environment and still be lost from time to time. You ever been in a city that you know well, but you still make a few wrong turns because you can't seem to figure out 
what streets you really need to get you. You can be in a familiar place and still get lost. Uh, anybody ever misplaced your car keys in your house? You got a certain place that you keep your keys every day, but on a particular time, you set your keys somewhere else, and now you need to go and can't find your keys, and it seems like the hardest thing in the world is to find when you set your keys, you walking around trying to remember when you had them last. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. The woman loses a coin, and the Bible says, one, she likes a lamp. She likes a lamp. She understands in, the, in order to find her corn in a dark place, she needed some light. Uh, we could really go there in another direction with a sermon. But in order to find her corn in a dark place, she understands she needs some light. Remember, family, there's no electricity or windows in the house. There's no, no clap on. You know, some of us got them. And the lights come off. And the lights go back on. You, you know, some of us got solar panel lights. And, and although it may have been in the middle of the day, the house was still dark. You got mud holes. And, and God is saying to us this morning, in order to find the lost that's in the house, we must have a light. In order to find the lost, we must be the light. And I wonder how many times God has sent the lost coins into the house of the Lord and we couldn't find them because like, we didn't have a light on enough. Our light wasn't shining bright enough. The wrong light may have been on. And sometimes we think our light is what people need. And our light is never what lost souls need. We need to show the light of the Lord. Our light, we think that our light, our light shines brighter than somebody else. Our, or our light is stronger than somebody else. Or our light is more popular than somebody else. But the only light that a coin needs is the light of the world. And we know who the light of the world is. The word of God is the only light that shines without blemish. So the word of God is the only light that brightens up the dark room. The word is the only light that can find dark souls and bring them into his marvelous light. The word is the only light that can make a drug dealer stop dealing drugs. The word is the only light that can make a gang member put down his colors. The word is the only light that can take the taste of alcohol. The word is the only light that can make a sinner see their wicked ways. The word is the only light that can make someone say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? We must make sure that, that we have the right light on. Because God says the lost coin still has value. Tell somebody you're valuable. Uh, that's why we can say when we got saved, we came out of darkness and entered into his marvelous light. Uh, uh, is there a witness this morning watching uh, that understands that if it wasn't for his word, we would still be lost in our sins. We would still be in ugly situations and relationships. We would still be struggling to find peace. We would be struggling to find joy. We would be struggling to find the right love. We would still be addicted. We would still be struggling in our life. Still suffering from the pain and heartbreak, still looking for love in all the wrong places. But because he's left the light on, you're more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I still have that. Then brothers and sisters, not only did the woman turn the light on, uh, the Bible says that she swept the house. Uh-huh. She turned the light on, and then she swept the house. Uh, uh, women swept the houses in those days, as it was customary to spread straw on the floor. Uh -huh. Usually, the floors were, were kind of made of dirt, they were earthen, and, and in order to have some kind of softness, some comfortability to the bottom of your feet, they, they would place straw on the floor so you would have something easier to walk on. And so, uh, 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 a corn falling down in the straw would make it naturally difficult to find it. So the woman took a broom. Uh, women took a broom and they, they would sweep the straw, little by little, hoping to flip that coin up 
or see just a sparkle, making it much easier to find. Uh, well, what does sweep of the floor mean for us this morning? Well, brothers and sisters, when you when you and I were lost, we had to be swept clean from all the things that covered up our sins. The, the sweeping process was called repenting. Uh, I wish I had some help up in here. The, the action of saying to the Lord or to somebody else, I'm sorry for my misdoings. I'm sorry for my actions. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. And have a conscious mind not to do it again. The issue is, brothers and sisters, that we have some folks in 2020, even in the midst of a pandemic, and even in the midst of God blessing us, to still hang on in there. There's still some folks that feel like they're above apologizing to someone else. They don't have to repent for what they say and do. We still got some folks walking around like it's my way or no way. How many know that as a Christian, a man or woman, we should, if we do something wrong, we should be one of the first to go to somebody and say, hey, I said something wrong. I did something wrong. Will you forgive me for what I said? Will you forgive me for what I did? Allow God to sweep us clean from the dirt so that we don't become lost even though we're still in the house. Uh, many times we, we want to make some stuff or sweep some stuff under the straw and let life deal with it. But God told me to encourage somebody today. Uh, release what you're holding under the straw because he wants to sweep you clean. You've been suffering long enough and he will remove the mask you've built to keep yourself safe under the straw because watch this, you don't want people to see you're not strong but you're really suffering. You're trying to hide your pain and your hurts so you mask it with a smile. Your light isn't shining like you think it is because you haven't dealt with the hurt and trauma of your past. You haven't healed from your hurts. You're still processing through some pain. And then there are witnesses that's watching that hurt people, hurt other people. Uh-huh. Hurt people, hurt other people. And watch this. Hurt folks can't help hurting folks. Uh, if you're hurting, you can't fully tell somebody how to be healed because you're hurting. Because you gotta know how to tell yourself how to be healed in order to pull somebody else through some healing. But once you allow God to sweep the things off of your life, then you can receive a word that will shine through you because you're, you're being used by the Lord. And how many true witnesses watching understand that when we don't have it all together, it's all right, it's okay. Just ask the Lord to sweep God and make me clean because God said you still have value. I don't care what your past say either. I don't care what your friends say either. I don't care what your family say either. I don't care how deep you're up under the straw. God said I'll still sweep you clean because there's value in your life. Then brothers and sisters, after, after she turns the light on, after she sweeps the floor, the Bible lets us know, uh, just remember about that, that she searches carefully until she finds it. Hallelujah. After she, she turns the light on, after she sweeps the floor, the Bible lets us know that she searches carefully. She don't just look around, but she searches carefully until she finds it. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. That means she thought about it. She thought of ways to find this coin. She thought of different strategies to sweep this, this hay. She disciplined herself to a task. She didn't just look around a little in her square, spare time. She stopped everything she was doing. She didn't care if she had to be at work the next day. She didn't care if I had to make dinner later on today. She didn't care. She said, I gotta find this coin. Because this coin represents, I didn't say it validates, but it represents who I am. And when we understand that something is important enough, important enough to represent who we are, then it's valuable for me to keep it in my possession. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Inch by inch. Foot by foot, she swept over the floor, searching for one lost coin. She could have made up in her mind, well, I got nine. He gonna have to take nine and be okay with it. But she said, no, I'm bringing what I'm bringing. And I'm determined to bring what I'm bringing. Meaning, she said, no, I know who I am. And I'm gonna be who I am. And if that means I just gotta take a little time to discipline myself, find my coin, because when I come to the table, I'm coming as a full woman. Hallelujah. And so can you imagine God in glory and he felt like he had to have a plan to sweep the world just to look for you. Of all God was doing, he saw your lost soul and he stopped as he kept on going. Whew. And he swept the world because your soul, my soul, was that valuable to him that he and swept the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had a plan for you. He had a plan for me. And so John lets us know in the first chapter of uh, the Gospel of John that he came to earth in the form of flesh. And he walked and he ate with sinners. And he knew we needed light to search in the darkness. So he became the light we needed. And and he knew that we would be dirty, so he didn't mind sweeping the world clean with a broom made of blood. He saw me, hallelujah. When I was dirty, when I was messy, and he said, Arthur, you still have some. And whoever's watching, he saw you when you was messed up, when you was lying, when you was jacked up, and he said, whatever your name is, you still have all. Hallelujah. Whew. You still have value or value for the kingdom of God. Is there anybody watching this morning that's glad God said you still have value when you were lost in your sin? You still had value. When you were covered in dirt, you still had value. When you, when you were dirty, muddy, you still have that. Power. When you were even in the church, but still lost in the church, you still have that. Hallelujah, Lord. Uh, every now and again, we still may get dirty sometimes. We still may get lost sometimes. But I'm so glad that God says we still have that. Thank you, Lord, for being the light I need. Thank you, Lord, for being the sweeper of my soul. Thank you, Lord, for searching me until you found me. Thank you, Lord, for seeing my value even when I didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value when my friends didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value when my family didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value when my job didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value when my neighbor didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value when my spouse didn't see my value. Thank you for seeing my value. Hallelujah. Thank you for seeing my value. Lord, and not giving up your search. Thank you, Lord, for making me important to you and not just my spouse. Important to you and not just my children. Important to you and not just the job. Important to you and not my neighbor. Important to you and not my fraternity or sorority. Important to you. Because after all, it was you that put purpose over my life. He picked me up. He cleaned me off. He placed us in the right direction. He picked you up. No matter how dirty you were. No matter how messed up you were. You still had value. Somebody might be saying, Rev, but I've done so much in my past. I've done so much in my life. I've been so many places that I, I, I just feel so ashamed of. And I, I feel like I could never be that shiny quarter. I feel like I could never be that shiny silver dollar. I feel like my shine is gone forever. That I'm just an old rusty quarter. That I'm just 
those quarters at the bottom of the jar are just that dirty quarter you find out in the mud. I might still have value of 25 cents, but some people overlook me because I'm dirty, because I'm getting it all up. And I begin to understand somebody saying that. But then God shifted my mind, and he started letting me think about a golf ball. Oh, hallelujah. And I begin to understand and research the golf ball. And I found out that in the early years, when men and women would play golf, they had a leather ball. And this ball was kind of heavy. And so they would get out there, and they would do their best to play with this little leather ball. But they found out that when the rain came, and that leather ball got wet, that it wouldn't travel as far. It wouldn't roll as nice. And their accuracy was way off. And so the inventors of the golf ball said, we need to come up with a new ball. So they went from a leather ball to a real hard plastic ball. They hit it a couple times and they found out that this hard plastic ball was just as bad as a wet leather ball. And so as the years begin to they kept on playing golf. And so the makers of the golf ball went to a little plastic ball that was able to grow nice. But they noticed as they were going through the, through the golf course, that every time they would pick their ball up, their ball had a dent on it. When they would pick it up again, it had more dents on it. I'm trying to talk to the quarter that's got dents all over it. I'm trying to talk to the quarter that's got value, but you don't want to shine because you got cracks and dents on your quarter. And as they would continue to go, they noticed uh, that every time they picked the ball up, uh, it had more and more dents. Uh, but one of the golfers said, hey, it might have more dents, uh, but have you noticed uh, every time we hit it, uh, it's going farther and farther. Uh, I wish I had some folks uh, that'll walk with me on this first Sunday uh, and keep them tied. Uh, what are you trying to say, by the way? They noticed that every time they hit it, you lost your value. Your friends forgot about you. Your family forgot about you. Nobody's calling you anymore. And you feel like that quarter that's on the bottom of the jar. I want you to know that God loves you enough that the light is on. He loves you enough that he became the light, the light for you. He loves you enough that not only did he send the light, uh, but he swept the world for your soul. Not only is the light on, and he swept the world for your soul. He's searching for you. He's searching high and low. And trust me, there's nobody greater to search for your soul than Jesus Christ. You might be watching. Hallelujah. You're watching, and you know your soul is in a dark place. Watch this. 
Your smile says one thing, but your heart says another. <laughs> your warm hug says one thing, but your tears last night are saying another. Yeah. You prayed one thing, but you woke up in life said another. I came by to tell you that the light is on, that he's sweeping, and he knows exactly where you are. Because he searched the house for you. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I yield. What must I do to be saved? So if you're watching and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Today is your day, really, to come up from underneath that straw, to come up out of that dirt with all of your nicks, bruises, dents, because he's been waiting for you. Because you're valuable. Hallelujah. So if that's you, you're watching. If you're driving, we're going to give you a few minutes to go ahead and pull over. Hallelujah. If you're on your job and they say you can't pray at your desk, I don't want you to lose your job. Go ahead. Run to the bathroom. Run to the break room. We're going to wait for you. Not because we shame, but we don't have to be disrespectful. Hallelujah. Right there in your home. Turn the background noise off. Because you're valuable. Now, just say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of my words. Forgive me for my thoughts. Forgive me for my deeds. Lord, forgive me for anything that did not bring joy to your heart. Forgive me for all my sins that displeased you. God, I repent right now. Come into my life and make me over. Come into my heart and wash away the pain. Come into my heart. Wash away the hurt. Come into my heart. Wash away the confusion. Lord, guide my mind. Guide my hands. Guide my feet. Guide my heart. Allow me, Lord, to turn from all my wicked ways so that I may please you. Help me, Lord, to be a better servant in the kingdom. Help me, Lord, to be a better mother, a better father, a better son, a better daughter, a better friend, a better relative. God, have your way in my life. So that you will get the glory. Please, God, bring about a change in me. Please be my personal Savior from this moment forth. That I will glorify your name in my words, in my thoughts, and in my actions. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you just you just said that prayer for the first time, please just text. Just let us know. This was my first time. I want to reach out to you today. I want to celebrate with you today. I want to let you know that that was the best decision you could have ever made. And if it was your first time, even if it was your second time, even if it was your third time, I'm in Romans 10, 9, 10. And I just want you to repeat this scripture, this passage after that. Because when, when someone comes out of that darkness into this marvelous light, 
You got to confess it and you got to believe it. And so, what other way is just to say it together from the Word of God? And so, we're right here in Romans 10, the 10th chapter, verse 9, verse 10. And if you just repeat after me, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's make it personal. Say, I will be saved. For with the heart, one believes. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. My friend, my sister, my brother, that's all it takes. That's all it took. Walk them into the light. Walk them into the kingdom of God. Come on, I dare somebody to hit the light button. Hit the love button. Let's just celebrate Jesus. Because by faith, faith tells me that somebody said that prayer with us this morning. Somebody read that scripture with us this morning. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. I dare you to type hallelujah. Somebody type glory. Somebody type it is finished. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Family, what an amazing time to be a part of the household of the Lord. What an amazing time to be a member in the kingdom of God. What an amazing time to have the Lord as your personal Savior. What an amazing time to serve a God the way we serve a God. A God who, who loves us no matter what. A God who cares no matter what I who reigns above. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for your presence. We thank God for joining us with our virtual worship experience. We pray that God will keep you. We pray that God will hold you in his peace. Hallelujah. Join us Wednesday at 12 noon for our, our Bible study that we call Let's Talk Bible. Amen. Join us. Yes. Call the office here at St. Luke for the Zoom information. The number here is area code 716-883-0961. Again, the office number is area code 716-883-0981. Until Wednesday, God bless you. God be with you. Now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in his presence with exceedingly joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless your family.